The island of Crete was first settled around 8,000 BCE. Over time, significant towns and maritime trade began to develop. Palaces were built, destroyed, and then rebuilt, culminating in what archaeologists call the Neopalatial period, which began around 1700 BCE. This period lasted for over 300 years and is considered the golden age of Minoan civilization. The largest palace of this period was located in Knossos and featured maze-like complexes of workshops, temples, courts, throne rooms, and living areas, as well as paved roads and advanced plumbing and draining. Trade and external relations were important to the Minoans, and their networks extended across the eastern Mediterranean. As a result, the people of Crete and the lands they traded with often influenced each other and exchanged ideas, usually through peaceful interactions instead of military conflict. The settlement of Knossos was established as early as the 7th millennium BCE. Today, one of the site's most notable landmarks is the Palace Ruins, located on the Kafala Hill. The ruins are split into two phases, the Old Palace, which has been poorly preserved, and the New Palace. The New Palace of Knossos had a surface area of approximately 13,000 square meters, making it the largest Manoan palace. Its focal point was a central court, which was probably used for ceremonial activities. The Minoan palace centers collapsed when Crete was overrun and conquered by a Mycenaean invasion from mainland Greece. However, the date of the final destruction of Knossos's palace is still unknown. During the new palace phase, the ground floor was dedicated to economic activities and contained large storage rooms. The residential quarters, which notably had toilets, were located southeast of the central court at the foot of the grand staircase. The palace was lavishly decorated with wall paintings depicting things like bull-related sports and richly dressed women. Large stone horns of consecration, which were important Minoan religious symbols, hung prominently in the west court. Other notable parts of the palace include the theatrical area, which is believed to have served as a viewing space, the tripartite shrine, which was dedicated to the worship of an important Minoan deity historians refer to as the Mother Goddess, and the Piano Nobile, a grand space located on the palace's second floor. During his trips to Crete, archaeologist Arthur John Evans discovered several ancient tablets. They eventually led him to define the forms of Minoan writing known as Linear A and Linear B. The Minoans used these forms of writing for recording many things, including business transactions. For example, one clay tablet discovered at the Palace of Knossos was inscribed in Linear B script. The tablet detailed the transfer of coriander, often used in the perfume industry, between a man named Kyprios and another person named Twynon. The deciphering of tablets such as these has given historians great insight into many aspects of Minoan culture and society. According to myth, the half-man, half-bull Minotaur was born after Queen Pacify slept with a bull sent by the gods as punishment upon her. This embarrassed King Minos, but he could not bring himself to kill the Minotaur. Instead, he hid the monster in a labyrinth constructed by Daedalus. Daedalus was an important figure in Greek mythology, an ingenious inventor. He once became so jealous of his similarly clever nephew that he threw him from the top of the Athenian Acropolis. As a consequence, Daedalus was banished from Athens, though this did not prevent him from being able to get work. In Crete, he was hired by Queen Pacify to construct an artificial cow suit that would allow her to seduce a bull she was particularly taken with due to a curse from the gods. Daedalus complied, and his invention helped facilitate the birth of the Minotaur. Afterwards, Minos conscripted Daedalus to build the labyrinth, presumably as penance for his role in creating the Minotaur. But perhaps the most well-known story about Daedalus involves his son, Icarus, who used wings built by his father and flew too close to the sun. 
thus plummeting into the sea. Some time after the birth of the Minotaur, King Minos' son Androgeos was killed in Athens by the same bull that impregnated his mother. An infuriated Minos demanded that Athens send seven of their noblest men and seven of their most virtuous women to Knossos every year. After being carried to Crete aboard a ship with black sails, the men and women would then be cast into the labyrinth to be eaten by the Minotaur. One of the Athenian youths chosen to be imprisoned in the labyrinth, Theseus, had enough of the morbid ritual. Before leaving Athens, he proclaimed he would kill the Minotaur, then return to his city on a ship flying white sails. Before entering the labyrinth, Theseus met King Minos' daughter, Ariadne, who fell madly in love with him. Ariadne provided Theseus with a thread he could unravel to help him find his way back out of the maze. Armed with this thread, Theseus entered the labyrinth, killed the Minotaur, escaped the maze, and set sail for Athens with Ariadne by his side. 